you told me some of the hardest things you had to see, and I don't want to repeat it because it would just drag down the energy. But it's the, the, he, he really does see humanity at its worst moments, you know, and a lot of death. And so if, if the, I want the departments around the nation to really make a push toward, and I also want this for the military, to support you all in seeing these very drastic things. especially since you were talking about the, a feeling of lack of support as a Black police officer from the Black community. How do you manage that duality of being an officer of the law, being an authority figure, but also with the what feels like venomous relationship Blacks have with the police right now, having to also want to be a part and fit in into the Black community? How do you deal with these variables? It's tough. Honestly, I think you just reach a point where you accept what it is and you just rock with it. I mean, it is what it is. I used to care a lot about fitting in and wanting to be relatable and not wanting to be ostracized, but now not so much. What Honestly, shifted? I, what shifted yeah, is not. a lack of understanding, a lack of accountability. And at some point you just get tired of caring. You, you get tired of trying to prove a point and it's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, for me, when you reach your 40s, you do get tired of caring. I've noticed For me, life. being a police officer is a job. When I'm off work, like right now, I'm Marcus. I'm not a cop. I'm a cop. That's something that I do when I go to work. And I just separate the two and I don't worry about it. So you're but, saying you deal with the variables by compartmentalizing? Yeah. Do you think that's good for your mental health? No, I don't. Well, I think about you a lot, Marcus, because I recently started watching the news and people make awful choices in life. And you, Marcus, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to your mental health and your situation because you see society at its worst and in some of the worst moments of their life. And I'm sure that takes a toll on you as a human being, as a man. And a lot of these worst moments you see with people of color and here in my city, the user, a lot of them are black people, right? And because I mean, yeah, and, um, I wish there was something I could say to help aid. I think it's just something you have to go through. Um, but what I what I will say is, you know, I appreciate and I've said this privately to you the the work that you do. Uh, and I think one solution, because I also want us to pivot the conversation towards solutions to all of this is to maybe help with, urge the departments to help with mental health awareness. Even at my job, and I work with a bunch of data engineers, they're, they're, they're like sitting in front of a computer all day is not healthy. You need to have, a, you need to find ways to help with your mental health awareness. And I think that is one way you could positively impact your fellow coworkers of coping strategies with so many, because you've told me some of the hardest things you had to see. And I don't want to repeat it because it would just drag down the energy. But it's the, the, he, he really does see humanity at its worst moments, you know, and a lot of death. And so if, if the, I want the departments around the nation to really make a push toward, and I also want this for the military, to support you all in seeing these very drastic things and, you know, and, and helping. Marin and I were recently talking about men and the space for men to show their emotions, even if that leads them toward crime. And we know in the United States, it's a tough guy nation. But some of this stuff that men and women as, you know, officers of the law see is so drastic, you really need to release that stuff. And my fear for you is that you're bundling it in, you're bundling it in, you're bundling it in. And we all know how that happens. Pressure moves outward. And one day you're going to fulminate. And I just don't want that to be bad. I don't want that to happen for you. I got you. Well, that's why it's important when you're not at work to have friends that are not police officers and to have yeah. an outlet. That's why I go to church. That's why I sing in the choir. That's why I work out. You sing the choir. That's right. how you knew I was a soprano last night. <laughs> yeah, I can hit them notes. Like, like my, my beloved Barbara, I can hit them notes. I heard it. I heard it. I heard <laughs> yes, it. Baby. So yes, baby. You just have to have things that are not police related. 
to yeah. give you that escape. So, so Marcus, and I, and I think there's a way to pivot it. I just want to ask, one, maybe if I could be more pointed, Andre just shared all the things you have to see. Is it, is it, is your you know fading motivation to to keep doing this work around the things you see and or the way people treat police in the context of you seeing what and, and experiencing what you have to see and experience? Like if you got the support more, not in lack of criticism, but more support from the community than maybe you've been feeling of recent time, would that make a difference? Or is it just the magnitude of the things you have to deal with are are so are so great that it's it's hard to do it over a long period of time? I think it's the magnitude of it. I think every young officer starts this career and they think, oh, I'm going to go out. I'm going to save the world. I really want to make a difference. And, and then you meet humanity. Hit the ground running. And then probably around the one, two year mark, you realize that society really doesn't care. You're, you're really not going to make a difference. You end up going to the same homes over and over again. You deal with the same people over and over again. Mm -hmm. And you just reach a point where you realize there's no accountability. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, even if you give it your all, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because no one wants to be responsible. Uh, you can say, for instance, a DWI. You get a drunk driver off the street. They have to spend $12,000. They hire an attorney and they pick every bit of your investigation apart. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. Uh, you signed wrong in this spot. Mm. And then they get off with it. Some of them go on to do it again. Some of them go on to do it multiple times. Some of them go on and, and hit a family and kill them. Mm. And all of that work was for nothing. You literally spend three, four hours working on this for a defense attorney to pick it apart and make you look like a complete idiot. You told me that. You said DUI, it's easy money for lawyers because it's very, and Marin's father's a noted attorney. love it. Yeah, it's easy money for lawyers because it's so easy to pick it apart and then just get it dismissed. I felt it was so timely hearing a lot of what Marcus had to say about being a Black police officer and just the emotion of the moment, given everything that was going on. And I really wanted to give him the space to be able to express that. Yeah. Um, and I was very, very moved um, by that. I had completely, I, I mean, I don't know a lot of Black people in law enforcement. Um, I have heard all the grumblings from, you know, about Black people in law enforcement um so to hear kind of directly from him was was very very moving with the black community and police it's a it's a very it's a i think it causes so much suffering in so many people it's like a unresolvable battle in some cases that i and i worry will never resolve and will just keep keep people you know going through traumatic experiences continually when I see um, police violence, I don't feel that that you know that rush or anything. It doesn't really make me you know scared or fearful or you know I don't have that same uh, emotional tie um, that I see that a lot of other people do, um, and especially members of the black community. So. I know that there is deep history there, um, but I I view it almost like um, you know a, a social scientist would look at it, you know, in some ways, you know what I mean. Um, and I'm like, well, this is the the crime rate, and this is going therefore going to be the the frequency of encounters, and these are going to be the nature of the encounters. And therefore, this will be the inevitable result in a nation as complex and diverse as ours. And I, and I come to the conclusion that this will never, these kind of experiences will never disappear, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, but the, the um, thing that I see about it is that, that it really causes a lot of trauma among, you know, probably Andre, you feel this really strongly, you know, when you use these videos, right? Um, and so, you know, it would be interesting to, 
to understand more about that and why because it's like you see that video and you feel it like it's an attack upon yourself in some respects you know um and i don't know what that uh emotional tie feels like and to hear it also um more about marcus and how what are the hard realities that he th thinks uh are there and will this ever you know i see that reform has been made in a lot of cases and and it's going in good directions but i also worry that um if you push reform and antagonism too far then you get rec receding police presence and then therefore you get more people are harmed by violence uh in the long run you know so i wonder what's what's the right amount um of pressure to put on the police and in reform and i think mm -hmm. it's a really good question for american society talking about tyree nichols um mm -hmm. I, I felt like i wanted to get into that more i may have wanted to say something about um the different instances of this horrible thing that have happened you know to all these um, people, you know, George Floyd and, you know, Rihanna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, Rihanna Taylor, Philando Castile, I mean, and on and um, You know, in each of those circumstances, I, I heard what, um, on what, uh, sorry, what Marcus, Marcus. said about um, needing to consider them individually. And I wanted to talk more about that. Like, I, I think I probably held back because I do think some of those situations, you got to look at them individually and what happens on both sides of the equation, like what what's happening. Um, I don't know, it's hard to say and I'm and I'm 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 hesitant to even say it now. Because um, Andre, I'm afraid I'm going to offend you. No, but, you won't offend me. It takes okay. a lot to offend but, me. But, but <laughs> sometimes, sometimes there may be things that the person who's the victim of it has done. Not in all cases. They, I mean, you really have to take them individually. But in some cases, there's something that they've done that has brought that. There, it's escalated the situation. And I know the cop is the professional, and he should be the one to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. But if, when you have two sides escalating, boy, it, it spirals. And so I think Long I might have wanted the what. The lines get blurry and there are, they do. I hear what you're saying. There can be contributing factors that yeah. don't help the situation. Yes. Yes. And and it's different in every case. And I mean, I've tried really hard to, I haven't done this with everyone, but in every case I tried to do a deep dive. I look at the whole video. And mm -hmm. since we talked the other day, I looked at the whole Tyree Nichols video. That oh, one wow. there's, yeah, I just finally had time to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And in the beginning, like, for example, I'll just go ahead and, and yeah, take yeah. apprehension in the sure. beginning when they were telling him to get down get down he was only on his side trying to talk to them and yes that yes. was that that was and i know marcus will say this because we're friends an act of non-compliance right where right. most people would have just gotten down on their belly Follow and the instructions. until they were up in order to accost orally the officers right right uh, and so that has been pointed out by the media and i saw and i saw that myself i was like well he's technically not you know complying and then get escalated from there. Right. I, I understand what you're trying. Right, to. but in that in that case, and so in this one now, I've now I've seen the whole videos. Um, I think that that was like that that one's on the cops. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, and I mean, mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to make that full judgment until I'd seen it all. I, yeah. I probably got some more reading to do and need to hear more about it. But I don't. I mean. That's my opinion. This this time it's on the cops. But in some situations I have seen where it some of like it, with the Michael Brown to me is a little more complicated. That one's a really complicated one. And I, I may have been holding back. Well, I maybe maybe it's just that we didn't have time, but I also probably would have held back a little bit on that. So, yeah, I don't know. And, and the concern there, Susan, is 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 just the kind of response you might get and and yeah, yeah. You know, what people might think of you for even kind of thinking yeah that there's some nuance in a situation like that i mean how, people may think how could you say there's nuance there's you know in any of those cases well in some there's no to, to me in some cases there's no nuance it's yeah. just flat out horrible you know one side has 100 percent of the blame yeah in some of them i you know i think there's room to, yeah there's I, i'm just afraid i'll be judged thinking that i'm i'm okay i'm trying to blame a victim blame yeah kind of. And I don't want to be seen as that.
Thank you for watching this episode of Healing Race and stay with us for a scene from our next video. If you wanna see more conversations like the one you just watched, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with friends and family, and like and comment on the video below. If you'd like to be a guest on one of our episodes and have an open, real conversation about race, email us at guests at healingraceshow.com. And if there are topics you think we should cover, we'd love to hear them. So please email your ideas to topics at healingraceshow.com. As always, thanks for your support. We look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Now, here's a scene from our next Healing Race. As Black people, oftentimes we do have to carry that double consciousness in terms of, yeah. you know, the way we carry ourselves and the way that we are, which, you know, gets into respectability politics and, and you know, and that whole thing, because, you know, sometimes where it can lead to conflict is when, you know, you're in predominantly white environments and you want to prove so well that you're not that kind of Black person. Right. Mm -hmm. So you are overly friendly and overly articulate and overly like, I want to prove I'm a good black person. Right. Um, but how that can come across as disassociating or being condescending to, you know, others. But yes, you also have to be ready and willing and able to navigate your own communities as well. It's definitely, um, a, I would say, a, a, a dance, a tap dance of sorts. Landon, you were going to say something. You said there's a white version of this, too. Yeah, there's white versions of this. To watch the rest of that episode, go ahead and click the video below me. To see a different compelling Healing Race episode, you can click the video below me. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.